All right, it's Chinese kit time. Uh, this one is a radio. I don't remember what kind of radio. If it's FM or AM. Uh, but let's take a look. Get out the tray. Uh, this is a uh, SKU number 1593471272527. Take a look. It's all in Chinese. It's like an AM radio. It looks like it has a ferrite uh, antenna. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic. We don't need to be able to read Chinese for this. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven transistor radio. So it's easy to start from the back. Uh, we have a uh, eight ohm speaker, and it's being driven with a uh, transformer, a push pull class B amplifier. Uh, and it's being driven with a transformer and there's a driver transistor here so three transistors are just for the amplifier for the speaker uh, then we have a uh, IF can one two three four maybe IF cans five maybe um, so one of these is probably an IF filter detector uh, amplifier, preamplifier, then there has to be a uh, an oscillator. This is probably the oscillator here. Uh, so this is probably the oscillator transistor here. Um, and yeah. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here are the specifications. Um, 525 to 1605 kilohertz, so AM band. Uh, 465 kilohertz IF frequency. That's kind of weird. 465, usually it's 455. Uh, 26 dB signal to noise. Yeah, should be interesting. Let's take a look. A uh, single-sided PC board with a silk screen, a uh, Chinese silk screen. Uh, have a plastic case, and we have lots of parts. Oh goodness! So here's our speaker, eight ohms, half a watt. Um, and everything else is in the bag. Well, let's open that up. Ooh, lots of goodness. Let's move these out of the tray. Make some room. All right, so here's our tuning capacitor. Uh, here's our IF cans. Uh, one, two, three, four IF cans. Uh, all different colors. White, yellow, red, and gray. Uh, here's our two transformers. Uh, here is part of the antenna assembly. Here's the ferrite core that usually goes in here. There we go. And there's a primary and secondary windings. And 
we have a switch. And a lanyard. And some stuff. Yeah, looks like fun. Okay, I figured out the secret to uh, locating where these things go. Uh, here are the instructions. Um, I had to use Google Translate, but uh, these are the IF, uh, IF transformers. Uh, B2, B3, B4 in the notes here. And uh, in the parentheses here it gives you the color. It says this one's red, this one's yellow, this one's white. It's also printed on the PC board with these same characters. And so um, the red one here, the yellow one here, and the white one here, and that leaves the other one to go here. And then these are also color coded. There's a yellow one and a green one. And in the parts list uh, it gives the colors uh, of them and uh, I think this one can either be yellow or red and this one can either be green or blue so I figured out that one went to the other. Um, the output transformer, uh, the one that drives the uh, 8 ohm speaker, you can actually measure the uh, resistance of that. It's actually a 4 ohm speaker, it's actually a, a 4 ohms output into, into 8 ohms. It could drive a 4 ohm speaker just fine. Um, yeah, so figured out the color coding. Now we'll have to figure out the other components. Well, there's a lot of parts on this board. They're all loaded up now. Um, interesting on the back that I've noticed there's some um, broken traces. Uh, and they're, they're broken on purpose with, with exposed, exposed areas to do a solder bridge. Um, so there's one there, one there, one there. Uh, I haven't read all the instructions. There's one there. I haven't read all the instructions, but it looks like it's probably for troubleshooting. Like you could, uh, um, I don't know. Normally you work backwards. You um, make sure the auto amplifier is working, and then you connect the IF. Then you make sure the IF is connecting, and then you then you go back to the mixer. And you, you keep going backwards and until uh, you get everything work working. So. It looks like it's laid out to do something like that. There's also some uh, hints up at the top of the schematic uh, of how much current each, sec each section takes. Um, so that might be uh, another way to troubleshoot it. Um, you build each section and make sure the current is going up the correct amount. But, uh, yeah, it's been a fun little kit so far. Uh, all of the uh, uh, resistors uh, stand up on end uh, to minimize space. And uh, the uh, diodes uh, stand up also. Yeah, it's fun. Here it is with the uh, tuning capacitor and volume uh, resistor. Um, All right, I have it uh, wired up here. I've got the uh, the antenna connected, and I've got a uh, speaker connected. I've got some power connected. Um, there's a uh, volume here at the bottom. You can hear that click. That turns the power on. It also increases the volume as you go up. And um, oh, if you can hear that. It starts to buzz a little bit when I touch around here. So what I've done is I've connected a, a function generator up to uh, up to this test lead here. And uh, we're going to test the uh, output section. So I'm going to see if I can inject an audio signal right here. And uh, that audio signal should make it through these three transistors um, and it's capacitively coupled right here so I shouldn't blow up anything if I just attach attach something to the base of this transistor here so that's a C10 C10 is make sure I've got C10 right C10 is this lead here Let's see this 
person. There we go. So, our audio amplifier is working. So that's good. So now uh, what we need to do is we need to then um, we need to then go back and uh, there are little X's here. I think that's where those solder blobs are on the PC board. So if I need to disconnect one of these, I can, so I can insert a signal. Um, so that's probably what I should have been doing all along, but I've just shorted them all together. Uh, but here, here I think we want to inject, um, let's see, am I, am I on the screen here? No, I don't think I am. Let me widen out a bit. Um, so there's an X here, there's an X here. So we've injected into this, so all these all these are done. So this one here is probably the IF. So we probably need something like 455 kilohertz here. Let's see what that's going to mix with. Uh, it's going to come feed back over here. I'm trying to figure out how you get audio. There's got to be a mixer somewhere. Let's see, this is, let's see, the signal audio, this is audio here, which means it's audio here, and um, so audio must be coming out of this. We have something coming in here, and we have something coming in here, so that they may be together. And, um, hmm. What does this one do? This one just seems to pass through. So this one's probably a filter. This is probably the IA filter. And then this is the mixer. So this is probably a the first mixer that takes it from RF to 455 and this one takes it from 455 to audio this is probably the detector this is probably a filter um, so we should see if the oscillator is running all right let's see if we have uh, let's see if we have any oscillation in the uh, on the board here we're going to be taking a look at uh, at the front end here, at this uh, V, uh, uh, the Q, Q1, I call them V's, but Q1, we should see some oscillation there. And uh, I'll be probing right around in here. Uh, let's take a look at the oscilloscope. Focus, there we go. And, oh, there we go. And if I, oops, I need about three hands to do this. So if I turn the tuning knob, uh, it does change. So that's measuring about 1.2 megahertz and 800 megahertz. So looks like we're tuning. So I think the next step would be to um, adjust those I, uh, IF filters a bit just to see if we can hear anything or not. All right, um, so we've tested uh, this at audio frequencies and we want to test the IF now. Um, so uh, I noticed that this particular transistor is not a transistor. It is a transistor, but it's wired to be a diode. So it's wired to be a sensitive diode. And so the output of this uh, IF uh, filter is a diode into a capacitor to ground. So a diode into a capacitor to ground, that's just a peak detector. We saw that in my barcode uh, uh, video. Uh, so this is the uh, AM demodulator. And so if we have a 455 kilohertz AM modulated signal here, that AM modulated signal will get uh, uh, peak detected and it will show up as an audio frequency. So if we uh, if we uh, modulate 455 kilohertz signal at one kilohertz AM, 
this should be able to pick up that AM signal and send it through. So uh, that's what I've done. And uh, this uh, is now coming from a uh, uh, generator, uh, 455 at one kilohertz. And I have uh, disconnected this jumper right here so I can in insert the signal into this IF filter, which is, let's see if I can find it again. Where is it? Oops, it is here. Oh, can you hear that? It is very faint. Very faint, but there is a kilohertz there. I know there's lots of noise right now, um, but there is a kilohertz coming through. So I need to adjust this IF can to maximize uh, that signal. So I need to get to the back of this thing with one of my ceramic screwdrivers and adjust it here. Let's see if I can. Turn up the uh, audio, the oscillator here a bit in intensity. Okay, it's not really helping. Yeah. I'm just not getting a signal through there. I'll uh, figure this out. Okay, uh, so I have 455 kilohertz modulated. Listen to that. I'm turning the volume up and down. So the IF works. Um, unfortunately, in the process of getting the IF to work, I no longer see any oscillation. <laughs> Shoot! Uh, so one thing was working isn't working any longer, so I need to figure out why it's not oscillating. Okay, well I figured out why it wasn't oscillating any longer. Um, I was getting really close to having this radio working. Um, uh, this, this is the oscillation section here, this transistor. And uh, I checked this transistor and it worked. It, it measured first okay in circuit. I measured uh, uh, a diode in this direction, a diode in this direction, so that that seemed okay. Uh, I did remove it just because uh, I wasn't getting voltages on the collector. I didn't quite understand. The collector gets pulled up through the coil and up uh, up to this node here. Uh, the uh, three volts comes in, it goes through a resistor, and it, it gets regulated with these two diodes. So you get a, 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 a three volts overall, and then you get like a, a, a virtual ground of, of one, 1. 1.4 here with these two diodes. So this 1.4 goes to this resistor and then the coil, and, and that's on the collector. So when the collector whacks up and down, it creates a magnetic field here. And then that feed, feeds back. Uh, these are coupled together, so it, it gives you oscillation. Um, but I wasn't getting any voltage on the collector, which was really weird. I was getting a ground uh, zero volts on the collector, so I thought maybe the uh, the transistor was shorted, so I removed the transistor. I still got ground uh, zero volts here, so uh, I uh, figured that the uh, coil was bad. Um, so I desoldered the coil, and I'll show you uh, I'll show you the coil under the microscope um, and tell you what not to do and why I killed it. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the coil opened up. Um, what I had done is I uh, stuck uh, my new ceramic screwdriver in the hole here, and uh, uh, the the part was upside down, uh, so I couldn't I couldn't really watch myself turn uh, the coil. It was underneath the PC board, and I was probing on top of the PC board, um, and. Uh, what happened was uh, this ferrite slug split in half. Uh, the screwdriver just split it right along the uh, slot there and, and broke it. You can see a little shard of the of the part here. And uh, let, let me get it under the under the microscope. Uh, so first of all, you can see the uh, 
the uh, crack here, uh, just split this thing in half. Uh, on the bottom side, it's just a, it's just a little shell. Um, it it goes over a coil. It doesn't go inside the coil. It goes over the coil. Um, so that's just split, and of course you can't turn it in and out any longer. It just Whenever you try to turn it, it just wedges itself in there. So, uh, what's inside there is a uh, is a little coil. Uh, here is the coil, and uh, you can see. Uh, let's see, can you see? Right here, that wire is broken. It should connect right there. Uh, and that is broken. So what happens when that uh, slug cracked? It it created a sharp edge, and then it just sheared the uh, sheared the wire off. So yeah, this thing's busted, busted, busted. Uh, here's the other side. That's the simple side. This side has a, a center tap, um, but these things are tiny. Uh, but anyway, with that uh, broken. Uh, broken wire there she's not gonna oscillate oh well okay uh, so as they say uh, never give up um, and I thought um, I have a broken wire in the coil and I couldn't adjust the uh, ferrite any longer but um, at least I could get it to oscillate again so I um, carefully soldered that wire together. Believe it or not, it wasn't that hard. Uh, under the microscope, I was able to uh, solder that tiny, tiny little wire together. And I assembled the coil um, knowing that I could never adjust the uh, ferrite. So I just kind of put it mid position and put it back together, uh, put it back in here. And I was shocked when I turned it on, it worked. If I can I can turn the tuner knob here and so it actually works. Um, quite, 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 quite amazing. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought that would never, never work at all, but it did. Uh, let me let me flip this over so you can see it all put together and and working. The uh, the speaker's kind of down there, but uh, yeah, here it is. Um, uh, this is the uh, this is the coil that uh, see this one here is the coil that I split uh, the red one. Um, so it's kind of mid position. So that particular uh, coil just kind of peaks the um, antenna to uh, the AM ham, uh, AM uh, radio band. Um, and so it's it's picking up that we have got strong signals right here So it's picking up enough signals to uh, to be a radio and uh, Yeah So it's kind of fun. Uh, I learned a little bit uh, I'm uh, gonna be building another radio. So I've got experience now with these uh, IF cans and how how to be careful with them. I think what happened is I I, I backed it off and it, it bottomed against this metal part and it, it wouldn't come out any longer, but I, I kept turning and, and put too much torque on it. Um, so that was the problem. Um, otherwise, um, so what do I think about this kit? Uh, it's a bit fiddly, um, but uh, if you've never built a radio before, I think it's a, I think it's a good thing to do. Uh, the instructions are in Chinese, so you kind of have to figure that out. Uh, let's uh, zoom out here a bit. Um, but we did, uh, we were able to uh, use the schematic to troubleshoot things, and I kind of showed you how to go about uh, injecting a signal to test the audio section, injecting a 455 kilohertz signal here. Um, like I said, this is just a diode and a capacitor, so this diode capacitor follows the uh, AM modulation of the 455. It gets uh, buffered a second time, so it's uh, diode into a, a, a capacitor to ground, and then a resistor with a capacitor to ground, so this is kind of like an, a, a low-pass filter. 
and then you pick that up with the volume adjustment here so that's where it picks up off the volume um, I, I didn't adjust any of these uh, now that I have it working I don't want to break anything more uh, but this is an IO filter um, so it's uh, tuning between stations um, and then we found that this is the oscillator section here this is this, this is the transistor that oscillates um, and we discovered this is the uh, uh, midway voltage to bias the, the uh, circuit. So it's a 3 volt circuit and this biases the middle to 1.4 volts. Um, so yeah, kind of a fun fit, fun kit, and if you've never built a, uh, built a radio, it's kind of a fun thing to do.